These are companies that started in Silicon Valley six, seven, eight, nine, ten years ago, started out rather small, and now have grown to unimaginable sizes. So, you know, people are still adjusting their mindsets to what it was and what it has become. We see with Facebook that, um, you know, the way they're, they're, they're mining our data, they're taking our personal data. They're not asking us, or they sort of ask us through these long end user license agreements, as they're called, you know, to sign off on everything. Um, and people just do it because they thought, oh, what's the harm? Well, now we know there actually is some harm. They're taking that data, they are using it for advertising. Um, there was a recent uh, disclosure from Facebook that they, they had, had, com had produced a report for a potential advertising client in which they said, we can target for you millions of teenagers and down to 14 years old. And we, can, we, we know when these teenagers are emotionally vulnerable and when they're most open to certain types of messages that would get them to buy your product because they're emotionally vulnerable. And so, you know, using our emotions like this to manipulate us into buying things, and then the next step is manipulating us through the fake news that we know about now. And, again, and keep in mind the fake news, it's not just a matter of steering um, news to us that's either fake or real, but they're, they're steering news that is charged. It's, it's designed to get us angry or, or, or upset in some way. And, and so these algorithms are, are targeting us and, and targeting us emotionally, this kind of psychographic messaging as it's being called now. Um, and, so, and then the third part of it is they turn that into something where elections are being affected. So advertising, fake news, elections, this is pretty new stuff. And, and keep in mind, we're, again, we're not talking about a uh, social networking company anymore. Facebook is a media platform. It has two billion users. It's the largest media platform in the world. Every, there isn't a, a, a US media company or European media company even comes close to the reach, the audience that Facebook has. Facebook is in the process of replacing television as the most important news, information, and commercial portal in the world. Um, that's what we're talking about here. It's a, it's a huge, I mean, do we need a monopoly that reaches two billion users? These companies have become what's called platform monopolies. They don't really fit the classic definition of what a monopoly is. And so even that has to be re revised and readjusted. What is a monopoly today in this era of uh, these companies that sort of exist everywhere and nowhere, you know? Um, for example, the European Commission fined Google 2.4 billion euros because Google was manipulating their search results. They were sending you to uh, results that favored companies that they wanted to give favor to. They were making money from these companies, lots of reasons. Now, you know, 2.4 billion euros, Google is so big, that's not that much money. So it seems like they've agreed to pay the fine. But they could say, next time, uh, or even this time, they could say, you know what, we're not going to pay your fine. And furthermore, we can set up our servers um, in another country. We can set them up on an island in international waters off the coast of Brussels or off the, off the coast of Germany. And we can beam into your republic and there's nothing you can do about it. And, and, you know, if they were to say this, then it, it would just reinforce what we already are starting to figure out. that. Uh, that these companies, it's hard to enforce regulations against them because they, they sort of exist everywhere and nowhere. Uh, you know, if you think about like Ford Motor Company, if Ford Motor Company wants to come to Germany and set up a plant, an auto uh, plant to build cars, they have to get a whole bunch of licenses and permits. And if they violate those licenses and permits, you can be fined. You can even have the permit re uh, revoked and be shut down. I mean, look what happened to Volkswagen over Dieselgate. They got in a lot of trouble because they broke the rules. Well, with these new internet-based platform monopolies, um, they don't seem to think that they necessarily have to abide by any of the rules. And um, we'll see how they react to the general data protection regulations that are just about to be launched here in Europe.
but um, you know, it, it, this is a whole new frontier that we are, are, are having to deal with. I mean, that's one of the questions. Do we try to regulate Facebook or, or do we wait for Facebook to self-regulate? And after I saw the congressional hearings recently uh, where, where uh, Mr. Zuckerberg appeared before the House and Senate in the United States, um, that's when I realized th there's no change coming there. He, he pre pretty much repeated a lot of the things he said back in 2010, 2011, where they were found uh, misusing personal data. Um, and so, you know, I mean, this is a company that they're, they're looking to maximize their profits, and they know how to do it very well. They're, it's hard to imagine that they're going to significantly change their formula, which is working so well. I think that they were engaged in damage control. They were looking to see what the public's reaction is, how many people sign, you know, get rid of their Facebook pages and these sorts of things. Some did, but not that many, because there's not a lot of alternatives out there, and people still like that they can connect with one another, even if they don't know if the algorithm lets them see all of their friends. Is, you know, is, is one of the crazy things about it. So I don't think we can wait for Mark Zuckerberg. I, I really don't, or any of the Silicon Valley uh, companies to self-regulate. I don't. I mean, waiting for self-regulation is sort of like waiting for the auto companies to decide to not pollute. I sort of look towards Europe almost by default because we can see the United States where it's leading us. The, the United States policy is being led by Silicon Valley, which means Facebook, Google, Amazon. These are the companies that are leading us into the future. The other third major power in the world is China. China is uh, kind of a black box. We don't really know what they're doing with digital technologies, with algorithms, with their social credit rating system that we hear rumors about, but we're not quite sure what they're doing with that yet. So uh, I've been encouraged when I look at Europe and I see that, for example, you have um, Germany with its Facebook law, which was a little clumsy, but it was a good attempt at saying, hey, we want to have some rules around this. You see uh, the European Commissioner on Competition, Marguerite Verdiger, who's, uh, you know, it put the fine on Google and put a fine on Apple in, in Ireland for uh, creating a, a, a tax haven there. Um, we see uh, now the General Data Protection Regulations, which again is an attempt to put some rules and regulations. So basically you're, we're seeing the, the vision of, of a social Europe trying to emerge here between the poles of Silicon Valley, United States, and China. And, 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 but it, we're only at the very beginning of this. There's a lot of, of the details that has to be filled in, and, and, and Europe has only begun down this road, and it's not clear at this point how willing the institutions and the governments are going to be to really do what needs to be done. Um, it, right now, they seem to be contenting themselves with just tweaking the Silicon Valley model a little bit. And that's not going to be enough. I'm proposing that we come up with digital licenses for these companies. Uh, you know, depending on what service or type of company they are, the license would be different. But uh, they would have to agree to these licenses and permits. Now, the question is, what happens if they don't? What if they just say, OK, we're going to move to the offshore island, and we're just going to do it and forget your silly digital license? Well, that's where the proposal becomes a little bit more interesting. Um, the fact is that when you look at it, the only reason we can, we can regulate auto companies or airlines is because we have the ability now to shut them out of a, a domestic market. So we have to develop the technology to be able to shut these companies out of the domestic market if they refuse to follow the rules. And, and what makes it, this, sort of, this idea somewhat controversial is the only countries that really have done this are places like China, Iran, Pakistan, uh, not exactly models of democracy. In fact, they've done this for reasons of political censorship and repress repression and these sorts of things. But the UK has also done it. They've shut down some websites. Um, my point is, is that we don't, we're not them. We can do this sort of thing for better reasons. We can do these, we can have what I call digital borders to, to, um, to protect digi uh, uh, digital domestic markets for reasons to uphold values of democracy, to uphold the rule of law. This is uh, the reason that I would propose that we would embark on these sorts of things. In some ways, it's not that different than what we do with free trade agreements. You know, when we do a free trade agreement between Germany and China, or Germany and the United States, or Europe and the United States. It's two 
entities negotiating the terms under which they are going to interact. And, and that's what's always happened with companies compared to national governments, and that's what's not happening now with these internet-based platform companies. And so in some ways, what I'm proposing is really not controversial, it seems to me. It's just, let's treat these new companies like we treated the old companies. It's just that we have to come up with the new uh, tools, the new technological tools in order to be able to do that. And, you know, some people said, oh, well then, you know, we won't have Facebook anymore and people like Facebook. You know what? First of all, I have a feeling that if a credible threat was made, Facebook would change very rapidly. They do not want to lose access to 550 billion, uh, million people in, in, the, in the European Union. Um, but secondly, if it turned out they still refuse, then you know what? It creates a space for new competition. Because the other thing that people have to recognize about these Silicon Valley companies is they are killing competition. If any new company arises that even remotely has something that's similar to them, they buy it. And they, and they either incorporate it into what they do or they just don't do anything with that company. So we're not seeing the competition that we need. And this would actually bring us more competition. Um, I mean, if you just look at China, they shut out Facebook, uh, Google, and Twitter, and companies arose in China to do all three of those. And now two of them are Fortune 500 companies. So they grew rather fast. If Europe did so, I mean, if China can start new companies like this, why can't Europe?